Hola, buenas tardes. Bienvenidos. Welcome to En Casa con la Plaza. My name is Abelardo de la Peña Jr. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications here at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes welcome you to today's final En Casa con la Plaza Cocina of 2021. Mm -mm -mm. We'd like to thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you're on Zoom, please use the chat feature to make comments, let us know where you're viewing from. Use the Q&A to ask questions and we'll get to them as soon as we can. If you're joining us on Facebook, also use the comment section to ask questions, make comments. We love hearing from you. And we'll pass on whatever comments or questions you have, we'll pass them over to our host, Jimena. But before we introduce her, let's thank our sponsors for today. CVS Health and Aetna, Union Pacific Foundation. Funding has also been provided by the California Humanities and the National Endowment for the Humanities as part of the American Rescue Plan Act. And we'd like to also thank the Institute of Museum and Library Services, advancing, supporting, and empowering America's museums, libraries, and related organizations. Uh, let's talk about a little what's going on here at La Plaza. We do have all of our exhibitions open. We're open every day of the week except for Tuesday. We have uh, our Calle Principal is very beautifully decorated, holiday style. And we have some boxes here for spark of joy if you'd like to bring your unwrapped toys uh, to for giveaway. Uh, thanks to ABC7 and the firefighters of LA for making this possible. Uh, and with that, let's uh, welcome Jimena Martin, our Director of Programming and Culinary Arts to lead us into En Casa con la Plaza Cocina. Please join us, Jimena. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? And um, it's a nice cozy day here in Los Angeles. And it's been such a great pleasure to be presenting these on, uh, on Mondays in the afternoon. So La Plaza, we're getting ready for the holidays, a little relaxed, we do our batteries for the upcoming series in 2022. But um, I'd like to introduce you, uh, Maite Gomez Rejon, who will be doing a delicious chocolate avocado pudding. Put this down. Something healthy and alternative to all the deliciousness that will be coming up for um, for the holidays. Uh, please let me introduce you again, uh, Maite Gomez Rejon, uh, owner of Art Bites, guest speaker, writer, culinary chef, historian, all these wonderful things. Hey, Maite, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Jimena, how are you? Good, good, good. So we usually what we do at La Plaza, it's always about chocolate in December. It's a time to celebrate, families get together, we do champurrado, the history of chocolate. But I think this time around, we decided to make things a little different. And so we decided that we're going to be doing a chocolate avocado pudding, like uh, an alternative, a healthier choice, maybe a little vegan-ish kind of, I think. Um, so Tell us a little bit more about how you came up with the um, chocolate avocado pudding. I will, yes. Hi, everybody. Thank you for, for joining us today. Um, so like, like Jimena said, we do this history of chocolate pretty much every year at La Plaza in person. Um, and I will share some of the history of chocolate, which is one of my favorite things in the world, when the food of the gods. Um, but rather than making champurrado, and I know that, you know, when you've been doing these, these in La Casa con la Plaza, and you've done champurrado, you know, before, I thought, oh, let's just do something a little bit different. And this is this pudding that I, that I love. And I came up with it, I think it was a couple of years ago. I don't even know how. I think I saw it somewhere, and then I tried it, and then I kind of made some changes. And it's delicious, it's vegan. I'm not vegan, but it's so good. And it has the, 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 the dark you know, chocolate, the, the strong chocolate with the fruitiness of the avocado and then the creaminess of both. And it's just, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So this is when I was like, Jimena, what do you think? Let's, what do we think if we do something like this? Both of these ingredients are the chocolate and the avocado are native to Mexico. Um, and so let's just celebrate them for the holidays and hopefully you'll love it and maybe it'll become part of your you know christmas holiday just menu i'm looking forward to it because i recently became vegan and so i'm exploring new tastes and a lot of it's like with no dairy i'm missing that texture that feel of the mouth and i feel that avocado is what kind of you know supplements that you know dairy feel that you have when you make this pudding so i'm really curious to um make this recipe 
later for the holidays. Yes, I think you'll love it. I think you'll love it. Yes, it has that creamy sort of mouthfeel. And then also we're going to garnish it with some cocoa nibs that gives you that crunchy that I think sometimes um, like vegan food, sometimes it lacks that that textures can like the texture um so this gives it that the, the creaminess that sort of fat and then the the little crunch so it's a really it's a really lovely lovely dish um but i thought you know before we start making it and another thing is that it's very easy to make it doesn't have that many ingredients and many of the ingredients are, are already you know pantry staples i mean sugar cocoa powder um i think a vanilla extract i think it's things that most people you know already have chocolate chips i always have chocolate chips maybe it's, i see it as a staple but there are things that are very easy to um to find um but before we start making them i thought i'd just share a little nuggets of chocolate history um and so here we have it here's a a cocoa um pod um so chocolate is native to Mexico. The, the Latin name for it is Theobroma, which literally means the food of the gods. Um, and the word chocolate, chocolate, comes from chocolatl, which is a Nahuatl word that literally translates into bitter water. Um, so chocolate was consumed as a drink for centuries. Chocolate, water, um, maybe some spices, um, and spices, as, as, I mean, either allspice or chiles, um, and maybe some vanilla. So it was a very, very bitter um, water, because chocolate in and of itself, I mean, it's, it's bitter. Um, and this is in the earliest recorded reference of chocolate dates to the Olmecs around 2000 BC. Um, together with corn, it, these are the two most important ingredients in Mesoamerica. One, corn, needs full light to grow. And then chocolate, the, the cocoa tree at the beginning, it needs shade. So it's like lightness and darkness. Um, but the tree is, is huge. I mean, it can grow 20 to 40 feet tall. And it has these, um, these pods um, that grow out of it. These take about four to five months to mature. And then inside them, there are about 20 to 50 seeds. So these are the seeds, which are the cocoa beads. So basically the same thing. So chocolate is a fruit, which when I learned this, it was like, what, it's a fruit. Um, and so it has all of these beans inside. And this is what it, so it's this long, you know, process to making, you know, chocolate. So it has these beans are inside this, you know, pulp. I mean, it's a fruit. It's, 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 it's moist. It's alive. So the, the beans are removed from the pulp and then they're set out to dry in the sun. So once they dry, then they are roasted in a comal. Um, and you can see from these, um, from this, let me just flip this you know, over so that you can kind of see that these are roasted. And I promise we'll start cooking soon. I just, um, so these are roasted and some of them are roasted much longer than others. You could see the, the colors. Um, so after they are basically roasted in a comal, then they are, um, well, they're cleaned and then they're roasted and then they're processed. So what that means is basically if they have this skin, this hull around them, and so the hull is removed. So I'm just going to take, you know, this one actually doesn't have the hull. Um, so I'm just going to kind of squeeze two of them together so you could see. I'm showing off my newly manicured hands. I got my first manicure in like two years the other day. Um, so you could see I'm removing the, the hull. And this is the pure 100% chocolate. And it kind of falls apart, right? So these are the cocoa nibs, which you could find. I mean, they're considered a, a superfood now. You could find them in the health food store. They're full of antioxidants. Um, so this is what, in Mesoamerica, uh, this is what they were then grinding. Um, so this is basically the process. You remove the, the this. And then this is what is ground. Um, and then this is what chocolate, uh, I'm sorry, water was added to this. So here's another one. This one looks a little bit more complete. This you don't eat. Um, and here's the, the full thing. So these are the cocoa nibs. This is, has all of the full, you know, this is basically the chocolate right here. 
Um, and this is comprised of cocoa solids and also cocoa butter. So it has those two, those two things, the solids um, and, the, and the butter. Um, so the solid is it's going to give it the chocolatey flavor. So this is just 100% chocolate. And the butter gives us that fat. So it has the, it gives it the texture. So this is sort of perfect. This is then ground to a paste. Um, and then with these other, you know, ingredients added, you know, to it, water and the Mayans, the, the, the Mayans were the ones that invented it as a drink. Mayans and the, um, and the Aztecs consumed it as a frothy drink. Maite, we have um, Yasmin uh, Manjet is asking, is the pulp used for anything? The, 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 I'm sorry, this? Oh, the pulp. Yes, the pulp is used, actually, there's a drink, like a fermented drink that is made with it. And I've actually seen uh, chocolate. Where have I seen it? I can't remember where I saw it. I think it was, um, gosh, I can't remember where I saw it. I'm not even going to say, but they, they're making chocolates with a little bit of pulp in it. Um, but it tastes very, um, just very green. And it's just, but they are using it in some chocolate and they do make a drink, like a fermented drink out of it, out of the, the pulp. It's very interesting because um, it kind of tastes like chocolate, but, but not. It's one of those things that you taste and you're like, this tastes familiar, but what is it? And it's the, it's the chocolate. Um, and then this is just not used. I believe that this is used for like to feed, you know, cattle and things like that now. The, the skin. You don't, you don't really, you're not really supposed to eat this. Um, and then it was consumed as a drink. So this was then mixed with whatever uh, vanilla spices, uh, I'm sorry, chiles or allspice. And then it was um, made into a frothy drink. So the froth, the bubbles, um, now, you know, when you make chocolate in Mexico, you put the molino in there, or you sit around, and this creates the bubble, and it's the fat, the cocoa butter in a chocolate that creates this foam, that creates this froth. Now, this was something consumed only by the very, very wealthy, by aristocracy, nobility, by priest. It wasn't something that the everyday person would consume. Um, and, you know, there are many, you know, vases, Mayan vases, that have you know chocolate vessels in them. People were buried with them to continue to enjoy in the afterlife. Um, but it was very expensive, and it was also cocoa beans were used as currency. You know, in pre-conquest, um, there was no money like we have today. Um, but you could barter. Everything was on the barter system. But if you had cocoa beans, you could you know it was worth something. Um, so I have a little list here of what you could buy. And this is from a, um, from a list of, from 1545, so about 20 years post-conquest, there was a list of, of prices. Um, so you could still see, you know, this was still happening. Um, with 100 cocoa beans, you could buy a turkey. With uh, three, you could buy a turkey egg. Um, one, you could buy one ripe avocado. You could also buy 20 little tomatoes um, or one large tomatoes. 12 of them, you could get a cup of ice cream. Um, so, and also with a hundred of them, you could buy like a white, you know, little, you know, tunic. And they've discovered in archeological sites, counterfeit cocoa beans, um, which are essentially avocado pits that are carved to look like cocoa beans which I love. Yes, Humana? Um, I, went, I was in Koba a couple of years ago and we walked through the ruins and there's one where people do offerings. And that was another thing. They did offerings of cacao beans there. And so I walked over and there was a bunch of little piles there as an offering for, you know, ofrenda in other words. That's amazing. And then sort of magically, this is going to be there. Yes. Yeah, so you do, you see them in vessels, like in wall paintings, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're around. It's just sort of, it's incredible. It's What's lovely is, you know, we have these, you know, these uh, Mesoamerican stories and a history that's been written down. What's really beautiful is, is that here present day, people are still honoring those traditions and offerings in a spiritual way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they say, I mean, to the Mayans, they think this is the very first tree that was planted was um, a, a cocoa tree. So the very, very first tree. And it was just so significant from the roots. It connected the, the, the roots 
to the this world that we live in to the heaven. So it was this symbol. You had all of these symbols of spiritual you know, transcendence. We have a question about Rosibel Guzman says, what kind of ice cream did they make? How did they make it? Ah, that's a good question. You could see actually they would have ice cream. There was a market in modern day Mexico City, the market of Tlateloico, um, which is right, you know, around the, the volcanoes in Mexico, the, the two volcanoes, like Sasiwetl and Popocatepetl. They there were these merchants um, called the Pochtecas. They were the merchants of luxury goods. They would actually climb the volcano. And this was like quick, you have to do this quick. Climb the volcano, get ice, and they would pack the ice in 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 my in corn husks and they had these little backpacks and they would hurry back and then they would actually season them. Um, so it could be anywhere, you know, they could up a little bit of vanilla to it or actually mostly um um, fruit. So different, you know, fruits that were, you know, Mexico has so many different native fruits. So you could have, you know, fruity flavors. Um, and even today in Mexico, there are so many really exotic, um, you know, flavors. I remember going to Merida as a kid and having like avocado ice cream and thinking like, well, you, you don't have this, you know, I grew up in South Texas, like you don't have, you know, avocado ice cream. Um, but in Mexico, it's like, yeah, whatever, or corn ice cream or all of this, the flavors that are now kind of trendy, this is like, they've been making these for centuries in, in, in Mexico. So she's saying, is it like the, the original raspados then? Yeah, yeah, because it's it was ice. There was no dairy. Um, this was introduced, you know, post conquest. So it was, yeah, it's basically the raspados ice with fruit. See, it really, really, it that sort of things that blow my mind. Um, and it was also used mm -hmm. medicinally to cure um, coughs and fevers, and also for women that were having a part, you know, hard pregnancy, they would give them some some chocolate as you know medicinally. Um, but it was only a drink for many, many, many years. Are there any other questions before I continue? And um, and then it didn't. The chocolate that we have today, it took many, 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 many centuries. Um, so it was so you know so many religious you know people could still say right there's religious symbolism attached to chocolate it is the most incredible food um it was first taken to spain post-conquest and it arrived in europe around the same time as cho as um coffee and tea so chocolate from mexico coffee from africa and tea from asia so there were these exotic beverages that were you know, intoxicating. I mean, they have, you know, chocolate has theobroma and coffee and tea have caffeine. So it created this sort of jolt um, that had never really before existed in, in Europe. Um, and it kind of marked the beginning of the age of the enlightenment, these, these three different flavors, right? Um, and they, and also sugar started making the rounds from India. So the Europeans started to change them. These were very bitter drinks. So they started adding sugar to them, essentially to domesticate you know, the exotic. And we have this whole new culture emerge in Europe, which was the art of sipping, like how you drink your, coffee, your chocolate, where, what you drink it out of. Um, and the Spaniards started adding nuts to it. They added hazelnuts to it or almonds to it, and they added sugar to them. Still a drink, still for the aristocracy. From Spain, it went to Italy. The Italians started adding jasmine and different kind of floral, you know, flavors to it. In addition to the vanilla that had already, you know, also was making the rounds. Um, and then it got to France and the French were the first to add milk to it. Um, so they added milk to it. And this wasn't until 1727. So chocolate has been in Europe now for 200 years, only consumed as a drink, only by the aristocracy, and it has been consumed in Me Mexico for millennia. Yes. I just remember one of your talks, you know, talk about how chocolate went over to Europe, but then also the imagination of what the new world looked like. And I remember you showing um, this beautiful uh, chocolate you know, pitcher and cups with their idea of what the new world would look like. Yes, and it, it's really because a lot of people, I should look that up. It's from the Met, from the Metropolitan Museum. It's a whole, it's a whole set 
the pitcher and the tray and the, and the, the little cups, they're porcelain, they're Sev uh, porcelain, which is like the finest French porcelain. Um, and it's just this, with this like faux Aztec borders. And it was this sort of imagination. I mean, the artists that were making this had never been to these parts of the world, but they're sort of illustrating it based on stories, right? So it just be became this, this sort of fascination and this this myth really um, that is kind of depicted of this. They were doing the same thing with animals too, you know, these you know lions with horns and just crazy things like that. Um, but it was this you know this exotic and even in in Italy um, it was this whole thing like is it a food? Is it a drink? Is it okay to have during Lent? It was just it created this uproar, um, you know, within the the Catholic Church. Um, and so, and it was okay, there was a, a cardinal in 1662, he determined that a cup of coffee after mass was healthy, um, as used by ladies according to the Spanish fashion, right? And then, and so, and then Marie Antoinette in France had her own chocolate maker and used it, you know, medicinally. He mixed um, orchids in it so that she, if she was feeling weak, so she could feel stronger orange blossom to it when she was a little bit anxious so it would calm her down a little bit and to aid her digestion you would add almond milk to it again it's like almond milk this is like a new trendy thing no it's like um yeah so and then eventually it made its way you know to the Netherlands it made its way to Switzerland and the Dutch and the Swiss were the ones that were sort of extracting this began extracting the solid from the butter and started kind of playing around with it. But it wasn't until the 19th century during the Victorian era in England that we actually see the first chocolate bar. Um, so this is kind of a relic, considering how many centuries, millennia chocolate has been around, we've only been eating the chocolate, like a chocolate bar for like 200 years. Yes. I got a quick question now. What is the, you know, now we got to the point that there's a chocolate bar. What about white chocolate? It's still a mystery to me. Can you explain what, what's the making of white chocolate, how that came to be? Yeah, white chocolate is not chocolate. It's, it's white chocolate is, so they separate the cocoa butter from the solids and white chocolate is the cocoa butter. And it was actually Nestle. This it's a, was originally a Swiss company. I don't know if it's still Swiss or if it's America, but white chocolate wasn't produced until the 1900s. Um, I actually have it written right here. It's funny that you asked. 1936 by Nestle. They had a lot of um, milk powder, sort of dried milk that was left over um, that, you know, they, they were creating uh, milk, uh, dried milk to send to the soldiers during the First world, world War. And they had all of this extra surplus of dry milk. They had all of this extra cocoa butter. So they started putting the two together, adding a little bit of sugar to it. And that's white chocolate. It's basically cocoa butter, milk, and sugar. So it doesn't have any. That's why it doesn't taste like chocolate. Um, it's just the. It's just it has the chocolate, you know, texture. But that's 1930s. So it's relatively, you know, recent. But there's like dark chocolate and bittersweet chocolate and milk chocolate. So it all depends on what the percentage of cocoa, um, of cocoa. Uh, not butter, cocoa, um, the solids that are in it. Um, so it's basically, if you use bittersweet chocolate, it's 70%. Um, dark chocolate is like 99 to 100%. Semi-sweet is 60%. And milk chocolate is only about uh, 10%, 10 to 25% of the, of the solids, of the chocolate solids. So it goes from, you know, milk chocolate that has nothing to dark chocolate that has so much. And then all of the others are different, you know, different grades of that. What is your favorite to bake with? To, I really like, well, to bake with. Um, I like, I like um, bittersweet to bake with, but I also like really dark chocolate, but like to eat, I like, I like really dark, it's kind of bitter, bitter chocolate. When I, I was a kid, I was like, give me all of the Hershey bars in the world. Um, but now, you know, I feel like you taste enough chocolate, it's like, oh, you developed this palate. And now I just like really, you know, strong, bitter flavors. It's like coffee, like a, I like a good coffee, like a bitter. And even though like I love hot chocolate, but I like it without the sugar and with the different uh, varietals to see which is the bitter because each one has its own different taste, kind yeah. of earthy. 
But before we get going, I got Holly Lynn. She has two really nice things. Um, it's a nice way to end our 2021 series. Um, totally complimentary with you, uh, Maite. Um, she says, you're one of the first presenters that I watched here during the pandemic and your attitude was so inspiring to me. She's a teacher, by the way. You really taught me how to be a better teacher during these uh, those distance learning months. My eternal thanks to La Plaza too. And then she goes, I have an online calendario de adiento and for my students and for today behind door number 13, number 13, we have learned about the chocolatada peruana and here you are. Salud. Oh, so thank you. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is, yeah, I really appreciate it. This is, you know, this, this is one of the silver linings of this whole, you know, this whole being online, right? That you don't know who, who, who's watching and who's, and who's paying attention. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm just talking to a screen, but this is this, this, thank you so much. Yeah, it's very, it's great. It's been a great way for the past um, year and a half, you know, this COVID life. Um, but, you know, I know now people are going back to work. And so when we first started, we had lots of viewers because a lot of us were at home. Um, as now we're going back, um, you know, we'll have maybe 20, 25 folks who view us live. However, these things live on forever through our Facebook and our YouTube channel. And then give it a day or two, we'll have over 200 hits. So people come back after the fact, you know, through the calendar and uh, we're able to rewatch. And the beauty of it is if you're doing a recipe, if you miss a step, you just rewind back a little bit and then you catch the whole entire thing. That's true. That's true. So it's exactly. Holly Lynn Purser. So mil gracias. You really I made mean, a nice wow. day. That's a great way to yeah. um, our mean, last in for 2021 uh, sure. and for this lovely day and with my thing. Yes, this is, makes me so happy. Thank you. Thank you. So should we start making some pudding? Yes, um, please. Okay, it's so delicious. So basically, um, like I said, very, very simple. Um, it's just basically three different steps and then you have to wait for it to, you know, to cool. Um, but I have a little, a small pot here. I'm going to add um, one cup of water and Three fourths cup of sugar and how much? Um, one quarter uh, cocoa powder. So this is really this is one of the things when the cocoa basically nibs are then they're made into a they're they're sort of wait hold on do I, I I get confused? So this is basically the cocoa powder. Yes, I was right. It's the cocoa put butter gets removed from the beans during process during the processing. Um, and then this is then dried and ground. Um, and this is the cocoa powder. So this is gonna be very, very, you know, it's like the, the, the usually it's the, what it's the one, the Hershey's brand, that's the most common. Um, you taste it, it doesn't taste like a Hershey bar. It's just really, really bitter. And that's what it is. It's just pure chocolate. So I'm gonna add a quarter cup of this. I'm gonna add one tablespoon of vanilla extract and a quarter teaspoon of salt, just to, and I'm just gonna heat this just until the, um, just until the sugar dissolves. I'm just gonna heat this up. And in the meantime, I'm gonna take two avocados. So we want a pound of avocados, which, which is basically two avocados, so two ripe avocados. And I'm gonna put them in my little food processor here. Um, Maite, we have um, Rosibel Guzman. She's asking, do you have a cocoa powder that you prefer? Because then there's also like this Hershey's, but then there's other like the Dutch process. The Dutch process. Yeah, the Dutch process is sort of, um, it's basically the Dutch process is a little bit less acidic than the one that doesn't say ju uh, Dutch process, the Dutch process, because they add like some sort of Al they alkaline, 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 yeah, alkaline. Yeah. and this kind of balances the, the pH. I really don't know what that means, to be honest. It's sort of science and my brain doesn't work that way, but it's a little bit, it's going to be a little bit less acidic. Um, so I think the one that I have now is, is a Trader Joe's, you know, brand. Um, I honestly wouldn't know enough to say, you know, this is good and this is bad. I, I really only use it 
you know, for, for baking, like for um, frosting, like for chocolate frosting. Um, so I don't, I, I don't have the answer to that. I wish I did. I will find out though. I, and the Hershey's now has a spec, like the, talk about the Hershey's candy bars. Uh -huh. And then I was like the dark special. Uh -huh. Now they have the dark special, darker cocoa from Hershey's. That's the one oh, I always okay. go for. Yeah. The little, the little ones, right? Those well, I, I like the little ones, but then they have the, the cocoa, uh -huh. the Hershey's cocoa, but now they have like the darker chocolate cocoa versus yeah. the regular. Interesting. I did not know that. That's dangerous. And they have the little Hershey's Kisses too. I think they have dark chocolate now. Mm -hmm. I think I saw that. Okay, so I'm gonna add just my two avocados and, and then just grind, grind them. I, know, I mean, the colors, gosh, so beautiful. There's something so wonderful when you open up an avocado and it's green. Sometimes in there, there's like a little bit brown and it's kind of disappointing, but, um, just put these in here, just one more. And does anybody have any other questions while we, while we do this? This is heating up and for any, is anybody cooking along? Not that we know of. Know? And we're so fortunate here in California with our access to, um, our own California avocados, but also with bordering with Mexico. So we're so lucky to have avocados year round. Here we are in December and are able to acquire um, all these avocados. Um, there's a couple of things here. All right, let's see. Uh, for the sweetener, any recommendations for alternatives if you have um, diabetic relatives? Oh, good question. For the sweetener, gosh. I don't know. Um, there's, well, there's stevia, right? There's those. There's stevia, there's truvia. I've worked yeah. with truvia before. And so if, if the recipes ask for half a cup of sugar, it'll ask you to do like half of truvia, so a quarter cup. Okay. So, and also um, a lot of people with these other sweeteners, which I've tried, there's monk sugar. And um, it just depends on your, your chemistry because for some people, like I know with truvia, I feel like my, the tip of my tongue stings. Mm. So um, I would go and test drive all the different types of alternative um, sweeteners to the one that you prefer in um, regards to taste and texture and how your body um, absorbs that. I know like my daughter, we did something with stevia. She had an immediate headache. Oh, really? So um, there's so many varieties out there at the supermarket. So, you know, or they have them, the little packages test drive and see which is the best one that works, um, that works best for you. Um, yes, we have here, Therese, um, we are cooking along. Uh, we can use, oh, they're asking if they can use maple syrup. Oh, I in don't place of the water and sugar. That's a total, that's a very different, um, that's going to be a really, I mean, you could try it. I might just do less of it because that's going to be really, really sweet. Um, and I don't, yeah, I mean, who do you think? Maple syrup, I've never cooked with maple syrup. Um, I know there's a lot of vegan recipes that um, ask for um, maple syrup, uh -huh. but I've been trying, to, I've been, I haven't like dove in and, and acquired the maple syrup for that. Okay. But um, it'd be interesting again, um, everybody just give it a try to see yeah. what, what their taste buds, what works best for them. Okay. You know, the regular sugar or the alternatives or trying the maple syrup to mix it up a little bit. I might put the maple syrup in the water because I think otherwise it's just going to be too heavy and too sweet. So maybe just add the um, water with a little bit of maple syrup instead of instead of just to dilute it a little bit. I think maybe emulsify it, you know, like mix it up really, really good. So it's all there. So it doesn't get lump, you know, clumpy like the syrup and, and then right. and then blend it in with the avocado and the chocolate. Yeah, exactly. So that it's otherwise, I think it's just going to be too dense and too sweet. So I'm going to uh, just blend this until it's really, 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 really smooth. Um, so just I'm going to mute myself for a minute because it's so close to here.
if you don't have one of these little uh, food processors, you could this is you could totally do this with a fork. Just go fork, 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 fork until it's really, really smooth. Um, if it has a little chunk chunky if it's a little bit chunky it's not going to be a big deal it's just gonna you're gonna have a little bite that's a little bit more avocado -y, which is fine um but if you if you have one of these just trying to get it really really smooth so that it's more of like a mousse right so it's much more silky i'm gonna go a little bit longer <laughs> i'm gonna push this down a little bit more just so that it's like a really it almost looks like when you go to the taqueria and they have the salsa verde, that it's like really like the avocado with salsa that has a little bit of water in it. So this is pretty smooth. You can kind of see. So I'm gonna add, oops, this is a little bit hot. This is a little too hot. So I'm gonna let this, I'm not, I don't want this to cool completely. I'm just gonna let it cool just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna set this to the side. Well, and I'm going to melt my chocolate. So this you could do in a microwave or in a, a double boiler, which is what I'm doing here. I have about an inch of water in this bowl. Um, and then I have uh, one cup of chocolate chips in here. So it's just one cup of chocolate chips. I'm using uh, bittersweet chocolate chips. Um, and I'm just going to put this over the water and just mix it, you know, now and then just so that it can melt. Um, but you just you don't want your water to touch the bottom of the pan because you don't want your chocolate to burn. You just want it to melt. Um, Nothing don't... worse with burnt chocolate. Oh, you don't look yeah. at it. You, once you burn it, you can't go back. You got to start all over again. It's done and it's uh, it just ruins the most perfect, perfect thing. Um, but you could do it just if you do the microwave, microwave safe bowl, 30 seconds at a time, just just to be safe um, and then just mix it. So I'm just going to leave it here for a little. And I have my mixture, which is, you know, everything is now, I don't know if you could see, you can kind of see that it's, you know, mixed all together, all mixed together. So I'm gonna add this to my, um, to my, my avocado. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do maybe half of it and then blend it and then do the rest of it. And it's not gonna look very pretty yet. It's just gonna look kind of greenish brown. Um, but until it's really well incorporated. So push down the sides. And I'm gonna add the rest of it. You know, since, you know, all these are indigenous ingredients, and I know sometimes with tampurrado or with Aztec chocolate, we put a little bit of chile, and of course, we put a little chile into our avocado. We make our guacamole. Have you tried putting a little chile in this combination or the mousse? I haven't, but that's a great idea. That's a great idea. It would be delicious with a little bit of chile. Um, totally. And that'll make it, yeah, just gives it another, another, another layer, another layer. Okay, I'm gonna go. A little bit long. I'm going to turn this off again and let me know if there are any any This is already super chocolatey. Let me flip this camera over so you can see it. But the so because this has the Dutch the the the, the Dutch chocolate. Um, let me flip this over before I go and mix. Oops, where am I looking? So super chocolatey. Um, and now I'm going to add my melted chocolate to it. And, and that's it. And then just put it in my little uh, ramekin. So the chocolate still needs a little bit more time. Um, and that's gonna, gonna thicken it. So you, it's, it's super chocolatey because you have the bittersweet chocolate or the dark chocolate or the semi-sweet chocolate, whatever it is that, you're, that you like, that you, or that you have, or that you, you know, yeah, that, you're, that you like. 
Um, and so it's going to have these two different types of, of chocolate. So it's going to have that extra, extra taste. Um, oh, Maite, if we don't have a little food processor like we ha like you have there at home, could we do this in a blender? You could do it in a blender. You could even do it in a bowl with a fork and just, you know, just, just do it. Um, once you add the liquid, whisk, 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 whisk. Um, I would just smash it or like over with a potato masher um, and then try to get it as smooth as you can before whisking in the liquid and then mixing it this with a spatula. It's pretty simple. You don't need any, you know, this is just faster, but you know, you don't need it. It's not totally necessary. Um, I'm just mixing this a little bit more because um, we're almost there. I just want it nice and glossy. Any other questions or comments? No. I love um, I love chocolate. I mean, I think it's my favorite. It's one of my favorite things. Yeah, I go to 31 flavors for ice cream and there's like 101 and I always go back to the exact same one. I always go for my dark chocolate ice cream. Oh, really? Is that what mm -hmm. you always get? I always get chocolate. Anybody knows that I love chocolate. The darker, the richer, the bitter, the better. The better, yeah. And now, I mean, most chocolate, so when it came back, this whole trip all around the world, and then when chocolate made its way back to Mexico, now we have like the abuelita chocolate and the sweet chocolate. So it came back a completely different, a completely different thing. And most of the chocolate now, you know, considering it's from native to Mexico, most chocolate um, today is made in West Africa, you know, so. There's a whole movement of chocolate. This is taking a little bit of time, a little longer than I thought. I'm just gonna keep- So going. if we were to make this for a dinner party, um, might they, so let's say you make it in the morning. So it'll be, you know, you put it in the chiller, right? From the refrigerator for the next day. Now, mm -hmm. if you're really proactive, could you do this like two days ahead of time? Or is it sure. like, what is the life shelf of this? Yeah, uh, you could do it, I would say maybe three, four days, it's really good because of the avocado, it starts to turn a little bit, maybe three days. Um, but yeah, you could definitely do it two days in advance and it's totally fine. Um, so it's gonna be so delicious that there's never gonna be any leftover anyways. They'll be gone in a day or two. It's so good and sometimes I make it, I'm gonna put it into these little little glasses here, um, but sometimes I just make it, just put it in a big, you know, in a, in a big thing um, and just scoop it you know, scoop it out. Or just put it on the table family style. Everybody gets a spoon and then that's there, have at it. Yes, that's all you need. So my chocolate is looking kind of funky because this was wet. So I'm a fear that I just ruined the chocolate. I think I just ruined my chocolate. Do we have time for me to get some more chocolate and stick it in the microwave? How are we doing? We got about 15. Okay, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I have um, some chocolate. Okay. Yeah, you know, chocolate's chocolate sensitive because you have to temper it. You don't want to put water into it because it, it shocks it and then it gets all chalky. Um, there's a little bit of science to it. Totally. Let me grab. So I'm going to measure out um, one cup. This one is dark chocolate. This is from Whole Foods, my dark chocolate. I'm glad I had some. You always got to have chocolate in the house. I always have chocolate in the house. Yes. Um, let me see. So micro, oh, I'm going to put it in here and just do, not make the mistake of putting a wet, so I'm going to do 30 seconds at a time. And but I just wonder if there's got to be a way to do a quick fix. There's got to be someone out there to. To tell us how to fix it. I don't know what it is though. You know, because I know like when you're in the middle of it, you're like, I just destroyed my dessert, you know, what to do and set aside. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, because it looks like I'll show everybody. Um, just just because I put the wet uh, spoon in there. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's like not really fixable. It's like, does anybody have any ideas? <laughs> That'd be great if someone can give us a solution. Somebody told us, oh, you just do this. Blah, 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 add a little oil to it or whatever. Someone said butter. Does that work? Interesting. 
Danya Ivanis's butter. Maybe wow. next time I give it a try. Next time I give it a try. Yeah. I'm going to try it as soon as we go out well. The other thing I think to make it, you know, um, when I used to bake to make ganache, I used to use, it's, you know, it's kind of not so healthy, the um, corn syrup. Okay. Hmm. You know, sure it's a sweetener um, or someone says here, coconut oil if you are vegan. Oh, coconut oil. That's interesting. Just a little bit. Another couple of minutes. Yeah, uh, I love chocolate. Oh, coconut oil if you're vegan. That's interesting. A little bit longer. And then we're just going to put those in there, garnish them with a little coconut. I think it would be, you know, beautiful with some raspberries also or some, like some, like a, a fruit. I think persimmons right now are still in season. Persimmons are in, but I was always go classic with the raspberries. The raspberries are so pretty. They're so pretty. And I feel like they're always good. Okay, let's see. I think we're there. Let me get another, another spatula. And to elevate this classic native indigenous ingredient dessert, we probably have some wine from Mexico at the end. Oh, yeah. What kind of wine would you pair this with? Something dark, a red, a red for sure. Uh, we've been so fortunate, been working with um, Gil and Eloisa who are wine purveyors and they provide a lot of Mexican wines to the, you know, all the restaurants here. And it's been such a treat um, to have that combination. And so it's, it's so earthy. I love wine. So a big difference between French wines, Italian wines, and even California wines. Um, the wines from Valle de Lupe, they're just, it's almost like they can do whatever they want. There's no set rules. So they really mix up the different types of grapes and some are earthy, some are a little bit cherry, uh, complex or sometimes simple. So I think um, I think that's gonna be the next thing we need to do, Maite, is find like a wine pairing or to make it a complete Mexican experience oh, for dessert. Yeah. That's incredible. I was just in Valle Guadalupe just, just a few months ago and I'd never been there before. And it was just, wow, it was amazing, amazing. I just want to show, you know, before I put it in here, I want to show the good and the bad. <laughs> show both. This is what you want and this is what you don't want. So, and always have the, the, the if you learned anything today, to always have extra chocolate. Plan B. <laughs> yes, plan B. So this is not okay. But that is silky smooth and just gorgeous. Um, so I'm just going to add this, whoops, um, I'm going to add this to our little food processor. Um, and it's, it's so, let me see, let me move this out of the way so that I could get in here. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't have egg, but it has this it's so creamy because of the avocado. All right. I think that's a secret ingredient to this. The avocado is a secret ingredient for sure. For sure. Side, mix this up. Where's my lid? And then I'm just going to scoop it out. Okay. So it doesn't look that different from what I showed you before, but it's thicker because it has a chocolate in there. So I'm just gonna show you. It has, you know, it's a little bit thicker, but it's it's pretty warm, so which is why I wanna, you know, refrigerate it. Um, so all I'm gonna do now is just take my little, my little ramekins, my little glasses. These are like everything from juice glasses, my wine glasses, my cocktail glasses, my, my ramekins, my everything. And just fill these. My dad can't remember. Did you send us the recipe? I did. You did. Okay, I got to find and forward it to Alberto. Apologies yeah. to all. Usually we're so good about it, but it's the end of the year. We're getting a little bit, but Sounds um, going on. We'll, 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 I'll, I'll forward it. I'll find it. 
Yeah, so this is what I do. I usually took, this will fill probably about six of them. I put them in one of these little baking, uh, little um, Pyrex, and then just stick them, cover them um, with, you know, plastic wrap or saran wrap, or I've, I've been using these little, they look like shower caps, put a little shower cap on them. Um, and then look how pretty that is. They're so gorgeous, these little guys. Um, and then I garnish them once they're nice and cool. Garnish them. It's also with a little bit of whipped cream. Just garnish them with some cocoa nibs. Um, so you have the creaminess, and then you have the and then you have the crunch. Um, and yeah, just refrigerate them an hour or you know up to overnight is even better. It's gonna set some what you know more than this, um, but you know, or you could just eat it warm. Like I'm I'm about to take a little a, a little bite of this. My husband is going to be so excited that I made this today. This is like his favorite dessert. It's really delicious. If anybody made it, what do you think? It's really delicious because I could, I could taste like there, there's like that. Oh, what's, what's in it? It's the avocado. You can taste it at the end. Now, besides the mousse, my dick, can you do like a pie? Like if you get like a crust or a cookie. Oh. So Let's like set so with like a. I don't know if it sets enough to be able to slice it and keep it, but mm -hmm. in like a crust of like galleta maria, it would be so delicious. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it'll set you know enough, or even like ice cream with this on top, or just lose dip it in strawberries, <laughs> or just or just sit here and eat it. <laughs> Open a bottle of wine. Um, the bottle of wine would be great. A great after a little, little galletica, just a little for crunch, a little of the chocolate and a beautiful glass of wine. Yeah. What a great way to end the series. That's all we need. Yeah. I, I just sent Averaldo the, the recipe apologies. Um, but again, um, what a wonderful way to end our uh, 2021 series. It's been always such a pleasure. Um, just great. This is easy enough recipe, a little fun, some history, some giggles. And I think that's what makes working with you such a pleasure, my dad. And I oh. hope to see you again in 2022. Um, and again, so wishing you the best for the holidays. On my behalf, all our viewers who have been so supportive of our In Casa Cocina um, program. It's always been a pleasure seeing everybody here on Mondays and seeing new recipes for the week and start new traditions and write those in your personal cookbooks and a new collection of things to do throughout the year. Y con eso, I could not do this without Averado being my person, person in charge, making this happen, this internet world, making us all look good, sound good, and um, be such an amazing um, presenter for this whole entire series besides in Cocina and all the other um, exciting programs that he does during the week for us as we pivoted towards um, the Zoom world. Y con eso, Abelardo, muchísimas gracias. Oh. Thank you so much. Sorry, Abelardo, bye. Thank you, everybody. Oh, well, thank you so much, Maite. This was great as always. And, and you could catch, uh, you know, this is just one. We, I'm gonna just tell you what else she did in Casa Sabor al Norte back in August of 2021. Mexican herbs and spices. July of 2020, the history of Masa, last December, about almost a year ago, December 14th. And then uh, uh, La Plaza, let's see, Mexico's first female cookbook, so, uh, author, there you go. So thank you so much. You could catch the all of her uh, sessions here on In Casa Con La Plaza on our YouTube page, on our Facebook page, and on our website, lapca.org, YouTube and Facebook at La Plaza LA. I'd like to thank Yesim Erka Magent. She said, very tasty. I licked my little spatula in the <laughs> end. I'm very jealous. Uh, Rosibel Guzman, thank you. These classes are so enjoyable. Yes, they are. Eva, Evelia Perez, thanks for the great program in 2021. Looking forward to classes in 2022. We got our work cut out for us, Jimena. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then here on, on Facebook, uh, joining us, Amore Wendy and uh, Max Berrera, along with uh, Maria C. Carrillo. Thanks to all of you for joining us on our Monday in Casa con la Plaza Cocina cooking demos. We had, we've had such a wealth of experience, talent, creativity, passion for La Cocina Mexicana that um, 
We couldn't have done it without you, Maite, without all the others that have joined us uh, throughout uh, this year and then uh, partially of last year and then uh, years to come. So, gracias, Maite. Gracias, Jimena. Thank you to all of you out there. Thanks to our sponsors. Let me make sure I get it right. I got in trouble last time because I didn't get it right. Uh, but here goes. We had CVS Health and Aetna Union Pacific Foundation, California Humanities, National Endowment for the Humanities, and the Museum, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, making these in Casa con la Plaza Cocinas possible. Uh, coming up, just one more session for the year. Uh, this Friday, we have the, the incredibly fabulous Dan Guerrero with the Latina Christmas special. Uh, you'll have to check it out. It's this Friday at seven o'clock here in Casa Con La Plaza on Zoom and Facebook Live. So con eso, gracias, Maite. Gracias. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Jimena, we'll see you soon. All right, bye-bye. Gracias a todos. Bye-bye.